I've been here talking about the change in optics and the energy that's required to overcome some of those challenges. There are opportunities, uh, but we have to recognize what the uh, causes of this change is, why now is the moment. People have got to get into their hearts and minds that they want to engage in extended optical services. It's obviously to do with the health service, but also due to significant technology changes that are taking place. Change is going to happen, and I'm also certain that if we don't change with it, we'll be in a worse off position. There are opportunities from technology for us to get involved in uh, more advanced equipment, and we've seen today how much uh, is happening in the instrument world, and as optometry primary care takes place, I do believe these equipment manufacturers will really uh, focus their attention on this opportunity for them. So we can play a bigger part in primary care. On the challenging side, we have got threats with automation of what we consider our territory uh, of, of refraction. What we don't want to happen is for you guys to be doing this reduced form of uh, optometry. We have to make sure that the services we give, the quality and the service, the professionalism is at a standard where people will not want to migrate to a commodity type business and it's in our hands but we have to be proactive, we have to work together. The answer is to become an EOS provider, to become a specialist. We are not competing uh, with independence, we're not competing with Boots. If they're effective that helps us because the industry needs to demonstrate to the, to the health service uh, that there's a job, an opportunity to expand optometry. That is the opportunity, the only opportunity we have. The risk, if we don't do it, is the commoditization of our business and competing with the internet, which is not a pleasant experience for anybody. The big thing against auto-refraction and internet is that we are perceived as the health practitioner. If we don't get to that stage, you know, we'll have lost the game and we will be at risk uh, as a sector. The NHS is slow moving. The fact that they're moving slowly doesn't mean that we have to sit back. We can be more proactive and get our key messages, our training ready for the revolution that's inevitable. Uh, and I think the more we can encourage the, the health service to, that we are ready, the more they're likely to respond and upgrade the opportunities that are there for us. And if we don't step up to those challenges, there are ophthalmology groups, there are medical groups that are standing by to take advantage of community eye care. They're doing other things on the five-year plan, so why wouldn't they step onto our territory? So they're watching what we are doing as well. So as Specsavers, I think what we can offer is the support and the genuine willingness to collaborate on all the problems that the sector faces. 10, 15 years ago, uh, I wasn't an expert on hearing, but we have, through a visionary approach, made a big impact, taken a lot of work effectively from hospitals, productively, into the communities, and that's where customers want to go, and I see no reason why we can't do that with extended optical services. Really what gives me a, a little bit of a, a thrill out of this is getting back into this field of working with the whole profession. I've got to actually think about my sort of state in life. You know, people say, well, have you got have you got anything left, you know? And all, all I do is one step at a time. I've got extended optical service. Yeah, I'm up for that. And that's my focus now. And essentially, I'll not be moving on until I can see the collaboration. And that's what I'm really looking forward to.